Hello, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle. In the last two days, I illustrated the historical simulation approach to estimating value at risk, which we can also call an empirical approach. Today, I'd like to contrast the empirical distribution with a parametric distribution. So these are the two of the three that we commonly see, the other one being Monte Carlo that I'm not showing you here. So we like to compare a parametric distribution with an empirical distribution, both commonly used to characterize the distribution of losses in terms of risk measurement. And for the FRM candidate, you'll notice that in operational risk in particular, it's common to blend or mix the two distributions. That is to say, to use an empirical distribution for the body of the distribution. And then when we get into the extreme losses, the tail, that gives over to a parametric distribution because really we don't have as much data there. So let's understand conceptually the difference between the two. And for the parametric, I'm going to pick the most popular, the normal distribution here. And so what is elegant about the normal is that we only need two parameters. See how I've got one parameter, two parameters, it's parametric. Other distributions may require more parameters. So I'm going to select a mu or mean of zero, that's my expected value, and sigma or standard deviation of five. So the nice thing about a parametric approach is that I'm really done at that point. I don't really need any data. Historical data certainly informed the selection of my distribution and the calibration of my parameters. But once I've used the data as an excuse to generate my parametric distribution, I'm done. And in this case, here's the plot in green of this parametric normal distribution and you can see how it's approaching the or converging toward a normal distribution. I've only plotted 100 data points so we can think of these as losses or gains, profits and losses where my expected value is zero with standard deviation of five. So in Excel here all I did was run the same formula 100 times so using the same parametric distribution. In this case, rand gives me a random value between 0 and 1. And then norm s inv is the inverse standard normal cumulative distribution. So it's going to convert this probability into a randomized critical z value that's going to tend to be between negative 4 and 4. So this gives me a randomized z value that I then multiply by my standard deviation in order to scale it. So you can see I'm able to generate random numbers here based entirely on the parametric distribution. And so as I hit F9 to recalculate, I can generate an entirely new set of 100 randomized variables, but they're going to behave according to the normal distribution. So that's parametric. How about empirical? Well, first notice, no parameters. I've got gray here. Rather, with empirical, I'm looking back over a historical series. And admittedly, I made this up, but let's say we had 100 periods worth of profits and losses. And in this case, so I just made up random variables running from negative 20 to 20. And they're random here in the light blue. So the big difference here is instead of the two parameters that characterize a normal distribution, in the empirical approach, I have no parameters. And rather, what I have is a large data set. And so in Excel, then, how do I characterize the distribution? Well, I simply can pull from this data set randomly. And so, for example, I've got a function here in this cell that basically returns for me a random row between, I have 100 data points, so my row runs from 9 to 108. So here I'm just getting a random row, and then I'm pulling the number from it.
So all I'm doing here in the bright blue is randomly pulling numbers, values from my actual empirical historical distribution. So for example, I'll hit F9 and let's see if I can get a small value just to illustrate. Taking me a little time to get small values here. Here's 11 and so that means that this cell is going to look at row 11 and use that value. Here it is, the negative 16. So that's how each of these values in the bright blue is simply randomly selecting from this full data set of 100, which we can't see the whole thing. And I'm doing it, by the way, in without uh, or with replacement. Each time I'm going back to the full data set and generating a random pull and then I'm going to get another random pull and I'm not depleting the entire set of 100 data points. So in other words in here where I pulled this negative 16 from the raw data set I didn't take the negative 16 out of the data set it goes back into the pool but the basic point is here in bright blue then I also have, just like I had with the, no, the normal distribution, I also have a random set of 100 values, but they're not based on a normal parametric distribution. Rather, they're random pulls from the empirical distribution, and they are illustrated here in blue. And so I can hit F9, and I'm gonna, I'll be randomizing my selections each time, but unlike this parametric normal which is the larger my data set gets the more likely it is to converge with the normal this empirical data set isn't con going to converge to the normal because it's based on the own its own the features of the underlying empirical data set which are non-parametric and won't necessarily be smooth and clean and that's actually an advantage and so we can see here if we want to summarize the two basic the basic strengths and weaknesses the advantage of the parametric normal distribution is for the same reason that we would use it in the tail for operational risk that is when we really don't have enough data and we want to use the simple par parameters to characterize the loss so it's convenient and it may help us where there is not, not a lot of data the strength of the empirical is that it overcomes some of the deficiencies of the parametric. For example, we know that losses tend to be fat-tailed. That's not going to be captured in a normal. This my empirical distribution here doesn't really need to be uh, conformed to skinny tails. And so it can be more realistic if we have the data, the disadvantage being it's data intensive. We need to collect all that data. So that's a summary between the parametric and the empirical. This is David Harper of the Bonnock Turtle. Thanks for your time.